It is the eve of Christmas, and traditionally here in Jamaica, that means a buzz of events and activities. My grandmother would share stories about that fresh smell of linoleum, the cakes in the oven, and the sorrel boiling on the flame. And while I love all those, my stories are about the wines of the eve, the traffic on the road, and the gems in Jamaica that you can see with a small group of family and friends. Because, of course, we're still trying to be COVID-19 responsible. Well, those are the stories coming out of Jamaica Magazine today. I'm Audrey Williams. See you right back here after the news. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, December 24, 2021. Major work is set to commence in early January on the Clarendon-based Chapleton Community Hospital. This follows the signing of a $112 million contract for Phase 2 of the upgrading and expansion project earlier this week. The Southern Regional Health Authority, SIRHA, has contracted the services of Cenitech Engineering Company to carry out the project. Regional Director of SIRHA, Michael Bent, says the hospital should be recommissioned into service by the middle of next year. Phase one of the upgrading work was financed by Beverly Nichols, a native of the District of Blackwoods who currently resides in the United States. She donated a total of one million U.S. dollars through her Push Start Foundation. Phase two is funded by the National Health Fund and the Chase Fund. Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark is asserting that government is pushing forward to ensure the public sector compensation review is implemented within the targeted timeline next year. The review is intended to overhaul the structure of salaries and other emoluments in the public service to make them more equitable. Minister Clark says he is committed to begin its implementation in April 2022. It's going to represent uh, uh, good progress and what we have to make sure is that we don't make perfection the enemy of the good. It's a, ref it's a once in a generation reform, a once in a generation opportunity. Um, a reform of this nature has not happened in living memory. It is an ambitious reform. It is an ambitious reform. And, but we can only do it with uh, the leadership uh, of persons represented here today and others. Dr. Clark was speaking on Wednesday during a Heads of Agreement signing with six additional bargaining units representing public sector workers. That signing means 31 bargaining units representing 80,000 public sector workers have now accepted government's offer of a 4% wage increase for the one-year period April 2021 to March 2022. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has affirmed that government is working towards facilitating more face-to-face -face classes in the new year. Dr. Tufton says this will be achieved through the collective efforts of stakeholders in the education sector. The decisions around back to school um, and the schedule uh, have, are decisions that have to be taken at the highest level of the, the government, the cabinet. Um, I can, I can articulate the thinking because that thinking has been ad, ad, articulated by the Honourable Prime Minister and the Minister of Education. And that is, and it's a sentiment of the Cabinet, that is that we really need to get our children back into the classroom. The Health Minister was addressing a COVID Conversations virtual press briefing on Tuesday. He says his ministry is working with its education counterpart to ensure schools have the necessary health and safety measures in place because it will have to include protocols around the same thing, sanitizing and physical distancing and so on, to the best that we can do. But also a response that will be efficient in assessing symptoms, testing and treatment, and, and extracting from the population those who display any signs of contamination or, or having the virus. The country has seen an increase in the number of persons commissioned as Justices of the Peace, JPs, in 2021 compared to last year. In a recent press release, the Justice Ministry reported that since the start of the year, more than 900 citizens have responded to the call to become a JP. During the same period last year, 617 Justices of the Peace were commissioned into service. Many were engaged through an island-wide campaign to increase the cohort of JPs. 
The largest number of newly appointed JPs came from St. Andrew with 299 and St. Catherine where 207 persons were commissioned into service. And finally, Tax Administration Jamaica TAJ, has resumed the collection of payments for traffic ticket fines at its tax offices island-wide and online at www.jamaicatax.gov.jm. The service was recently suspended after changes to the applicable law and the resulting need for a list of traffic offense codes being provided to the Revenue Authority to effect changes to its systems. With this resumption, the TAJ says only traffic tickets issued within the last 21 days and presented for payment can be receipted by tax administration. More information can be found by calling the Tax Administration Customer Care Center at 888-TAX-HELP. That's 888-829-4357 or visiting the TAJ's website. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Christmas trend today has changed a lot from previous times. So previous times you had big markets, you know, there was a lot of home cooking. There was not a lot of home cooking anymore. People buy a lot of things, you know. Um, you don't get that sort of home cooked thing anymore. The people were, I remember my mother used to buy sorrel and she used to prepare the sorrel herself. You know, or you prepare the cake yourself rather than buying the cake now. When my mother used to prepare the cake and prepare everything at home. So that's some, some of the things that people need to do. Um, they need to look at maybe doing that preparation at home. In the midst of having all the fun Christmas offers, like eating those many slices of fruit cake, prepared in true Jamaican style, and making a meal of wines and other beverages, think. Make sure you know how much is too much, especially if your next adventure will take you driving. A common practice while socializing, celebrating, or just relaxing is the consumption of alcohol. To some, this is second nature. All too common also are the negative effects that drinking has on the human body. While occasional drinking is not necessarily a problem, it's the excessive intake that can have severe consequences. The effects of too much alcohol consumption include blurred vision, breathing problems, impaired judgment, concentration problems, slurred speech, and of course, addiction resulting from long-term use. Now, these effects may vary based on a variety of factors, such as how much you drink, how often you drink, your age, health status, and family history. Alcohol use does not have to be reckless. Here are some tips to practice responsible drinking. Plan ahead. If you plan on drinking at an event, get a designated driver. Put it down. Show it down. Show it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Set your own limit. No much is too much. Know your family history. If you come from a family with a history of alcohol dependence, you might want to limit your drinking. Remember, responsible drinking is a very simple thing. What people want good memories to say, wow, I got this from this person and they really thought about me. So, how about looking for some pictures that you have of you and that special person and packaging it nicely or putting it in a picture frame? That could make a really nice gift. Or think about what is their financial goal that they're trying to save towards. And it may be that you put a nice little card and say, hey, I'm contributing towards X because I know it means the world to you. Or look around the home. What is it that they really want? It could be something as simple as lovely pillows for a woman, right? And you may buy her a set of pillows. Look for something that means the world to that person. It doesn't have to cost a whole lot of money. It just has to show that you've put in a whole lot of heart. A 
of course, we never want bad events to get in the way of all the excitement of Christmas Eve. But being prepared is a must because the truth is anything can happen. You know how they say accidents do happen unexpectedly and often unintentionally. Though road safety experts no longer define these unfortunate incidents involving motor vehicles as accidents, they're certainly never intended. Unfavorable weather conditions, objects on the road, your miscalculation while driving, or another driver can cause crashes, even for the best defensive drivers. That's exactly why it's important to know how to respond in these situations. So, what do you do at that exact moment? What should be your next steps? And when and how should you file a police report? For the number of reports that, are, that come to this station, um, perhaps it's on a basis of about 10 to 15 per day. That's the number of accidents per day. So after a road traffic accident, a um, person should first try to clear the roadway if they are obstructing the traffic for other uh, motorists. Secondly, um, drivers are expected to exchange vehicle documents and the document should include their registration certificate, certificate of fitness, insurance certificate and your driver's license information. Those are the essential four pieces of information that should be provided to both parties after an accident. Contact information is optional, but you have cases where a person tries to settle outside insurance, and that's now a civil matter. It's an agreement between both parties, so if they want to exchange um, contact information, that's also optional, depending on the intention that they have in terms of fixing the vehicle outside insurance or what. Your next step, making a police report about the collision. This is always a good idea. That way you have proof of exactly what happened and the scope of any injuries. In terms of our approach as police officers for a motor vehicle accident, um, first the, the critical thing is to check for, for injuries, make sure that um, persons are okay. Um, if there is a need for persons to be assisted to the hospital for any um, sort of treatment, we should make sure we render assistance to persons in need of that care first. Um, secondly, we check for um, the damage for the vehicles, make sure there is no obstruction um, along the roadway and then we can treat with the documents or the exchange of particulars between both parties. After making a report of a motor vehicle accident, um, the next step that persons are advised to do is to make a, make a report to their insurance company and that's for another motorist as it relates to a pedestrian um, who are persons who are injured they are also advised to get the assistance of an attorney to file a personal injury um, claim against the, the party that is liable in the accident. For follow-up visits, um, what we do, we have cases where persons are, are seriously injured, some of which are not able to make it to the station to give a report in the first instance. So what we try to do, whether the persons are hospitalized, we ensure that visits are made and that the person's conditions are updated as we go along. As we, throughout the investigation, we ensure that the person's conditions are updated along the, the procedure. But, are you always required to report traffic collisions? Not in all cases, a re report must be filed um, for accidents. Um, we have situations where it could be a very minor mishap. For example, someone could be reversing from their garage, they could bump their gate. So in those cases, it's not necessary for them to make a report. But for other situations involving another motorist or a case where a pedestrian or a property is damaged, a report is expected to be made because persons at times are expected to make claims, whether from their insurance company or their attorneys, based on the damage received or the injuries they've sustained. Reports from the Road Safety Unit shows that up to April 26, 139 lives have been cut short because of road crashes this year, with over 100 of those being males. And for the corresponding period last year, 136 lives were lost in road crashes. 
on a more global level. Studies from the World Health Organization WHO show that approximately 1.35 million people die each year as a result of road traffic crashes, and 3% of most countries' gross domestic product is spent on road traffic crashes. The most common cause of motor vehicle accidents from my understanding is mostly impatience on the part of some of the drivers and a lack of knowledge as to how the roadways should be used. And I also believe the implementation of, of traffic signs at various areas would also aid the process because most drivers are not aware of what to do at various parts of the roadway. In the face of such figures, even the most careful driver can suddenly encounter a bit of bad fortune on the road. You know that scene. Decisions can be like car accidents, sudden and full of consequences. So how about making the right decision to be responsible road users today? It's always beautiful in Jamaica. Everything usually be green and pretty. We have beautiful water. Temperature that is normal temperature, the water never cold. We've been into business for about 13 years. J-U-S-C, C triple O L. Just cool. It's spelled with three zero. We make three different types of pudding. We make potato, we make cornmeal, and we make total. This is the cornmeal. Okay? That's actually almost the last process. What he's gonna do now, he's gonna put the gel on top within no time. We have to take it off because the gel give it a nice taste. We have the people like Shelly and Fraser came here. We have, you know, you could name the biggest artists, Shabba Ranks, name them all. Being the man, they all come here and buy their food. This is what we grew up on. Now, when the people come to Jamaica, everybody, as soon as they land off the plane, this is where they come. They want to taste this food because it's bring them back to the old days. Long time days when they was a kid growing up and they used to sit on the fire and watch their mama or their grandmother bake the pudding. We try not to change off our roots, we try to keep it that way. And not only that, we have a lot of love. Because we're all about love. If you want Christmas Eve to take you on the road to some place where you can bond with your family, then Jamaica offers a range of options. Today we'll explore some spots in Portland. So Portland is this parish where the waters move to their own dialogue. These shapeless liquids shaping our ability to experience life around us. Of course, we keep returning to stunning but familiar blue or turquoise spaces we grew up around but maybe never quite enjoyed how we're supposed to. This is a parish where the water smooth like rum, Jamaican style. Real life can be spicy like jerk chicken, the true flavor of Portland. Our the culture can be exciting, like we the people. Six boy! Luxurious resorts, the greener of tropical plants, and the radiant sunlight, all of which of course make Portland a breathtaking place to see. But today we're exploring the seas of the parish as Portland speaks to us with her unique language. Since time, people have been seeking waterways to open new horizons or even driving coastlines in search of surf spots. Well, here at Boston Bay Beach, we found one of Jamaica's ideal surf spots where surfing in the country began in the 1900s. The traditional surfing that we have come to envision when the word is used of someone standing on a surfboard riding a big wave. Um, the popularity of that in Jamaica actually probably took off somewhere in the late 1950s to early 1960s. Boston was 
one of the places where surfing was possible. And as such, these surfers who lived in Kingston used to make a regular trip over to Boston Bay to enjoy the surf over there. You know, and Boston Bay became renowned as one of the surfing beaches in Jamaica, and being the fact that it was on the north coast and it was a beautiful picturesque cove uh, that also allowed for swimming as well as surfing. It became very popular as a surf destination. I could say that I've got my first personal surfboard in about 1974 and I've been surfing since that time until now. It enriched my life um, and with a feeling when you're surfing it's almost like flying is what I would say. You feel like you're flying because you're moving over the surface of water like how like, oh God said they move over the surface of the water in a Genesis 1. And just in case you didn't know, Boston is an unusual but beautiful horseshoe-shaped bay that leads to the sea. It provides a lovely view. Surfing is not so popular in Jamaica, but at this beach, locals and tourists will be tempted by the tides to grab a surfboard and ride the waves. So if you're here, do it anyway. My name is Anthony and I've been surfing over four years now. Boston Bay Beach is one of the safest beach to surf and swim and come and enjoy the good food that we have here as well. Well, I've been surfing here at Boston Bay Beach for nine years now and still going. Well, you have beautiful scenery, nice ways for surfing and then you have nice jerk food all around and nice friendly people. So right now here at Boston Beach is like the most beautiful place on the island for surfing. Surfing kind of like refreshes my, my, my mind and after a stressful day and stuff like that. And teaching people to surf is also fun. It helps to put a smile on other people's face and stuff like that. like myself. Come to Boston Bay Beach and test the limits of gravity on the tides. Rent a surfboard, get yourself a surf instructor and surf up. I promise you, it will be an unforgettable experience. Now on my journey in Portland, I discovered somewhere that's tucked away in the parish. Off the beaten track, a literal hidden gem, Turtle Bay. And what makes Turtle Bay so unique? The bay is named for the turtle shell shaped stone monument that magically rises from the water. Well, that's of course if you believe in magic. And there's an adventure to be had in trying to find your way there. Turtle Bay is a great place to just escape from the rattle and hum of things, chill and just enjoy the view of the lovely rocks. Now after exploring all those exhibitions of colors, the ebb and flow of tides and the beach bowing to our need for adventure, I mean it's only fitting to relax a little above sea level. I'm on my way to Canopy House and these are tree houses or hotels tucked away high up in the rainforest. So you can just imagine the lush surrounding, birds tweeting, leaves rustling, sea splashing. But it's easy to see how all these come together to create one thing, beauty. Canopy House is actually near the Blue Lagoon in Port Antonio. We are totally off the beaten track. It's hard to find us and that's deliberate. It is not for everybody. Canopy House is pretty much in a rainforest. So we have totally wooden structures. We try to fit into the environment. So if you're not into natural scenery, if you're not into environmentally friendly properties, this is not for you. We use local people to make the houses and local wood. So sweet wood, almond tree, these are just some of the names. We 
we actually exit into the Blue, Blue Lagoon and we have a deck that you can jump off and swim at the Blue Lagoon. We have kayaks on property. I find though that the, um, the people from Europe enjoy canopy a lot. And lately we have been getting a lot of growth from Jamaica because Port Antonio is now becoming the capital of getting away from it all in Jamaica. It's no easy ride getting here, but it's a worthwhile trip. So Portland may be several different things for several different persons. And for me, it's a parish with so much beauty to see, feel and taste. Come and enjoy the whole Portland story from the bush to the beach or the hill, whatever you will. Really, it's all here. The Disabilities Act will protect the rights of all persons with disabilities. And here's a great teaching moment. Every person with a disability, like a deaf or hard of hearing child, for example, has the right to an education with accessible facilities and the support they need. In this case, it would be a teacher who can use the language of the deaf, which is sign language. Visit jcpdja.com. A message from the JCPD, an agency of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Some of us may not even think about venturing outside this Christmas Eve. And if that's you, it's absolutely fine. Go ahead and keep the spirit of Christmas close to home. It's a safe and festive way to celebrate the season. Here are some things you can do at home this Christmas Eve. Ignite the scents of Christmas. These scents I'm talking about are the ones that come from your kitchen. How about baking a Christmas cake or pudding, adding some sorrel juice with or without the Jamaican rum in the mix? Prepare care packages for others. This is a great way to remind people in need that you're thinking of them during the holidays. You can also send these out after Christmas so they'll be received as a New Year's gift to extend the holiday wishes. Caroling throughout the night. What better way to get in the festive mood than with some Christmas carols? This is a good way to enjoy the season and you can gather the family and just sing along or even have your very own Christmas karaoke. At the movies. I did say we're staying in, so I don't mean literally going out to the movies. This Christmas Eve, consider staying in and watching some classic holiday movies. Make it an event. Have the family get dressed in fancy garments or cozy holiday pajamas. Get the popcorn or other Christmas treats. Gather in front of the TV and make a night of it. I'll give you two of my favorite options. The Grinch and Home Alone. Go knock yourself out. Can you think of any other way to spend your Christmas Eve inside? Share your responses with us on our social media channels. We'll be looking out for them. As we end today's Christmas show, we wish this Christmas Eve brings you the gifts of happiness, joy and good health. The pages of Jamaica Magazine can continue flipping on your command by simply visiting our YouTube channel to see this and other episodes and features. Also, visit our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter pages for more information. From all of us here at the JIS, I'm Audrey Williams, begging you to stay safe this festive season. See you soon. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.